Hello and welcome to the Grenade Creations podcast channel. This is episode 85. My name is Percy, my pronouns are they, them, and I am coming to you from Paisley in Scotland. If it helps, that is fairly close to Glasgow. Well, it's going to probably be a fairly short podcast. I don't have that much to show off, but first of all, just to highlight something, I am wearing my ranunculus sweater. I aggressively blocked this and I think it has worked out really, really well. It fits, it is um, a, quite loose as well. Um, the only thing I would maybe have changed, and may change if I make another one, is just to knit it longer. It's kind of at that awkward stage where it's just, it's obviously not a crop top, but it also isn't quite long enough as a standard top. I don't know, it's really hard to explain and I'm not going to stand up. Uh, but yeah, I aggressively blocked it to make it wide enough for me and then tried to get as much length out of that as possible. And I am really, really happy with it. I'm just noticing that my sleeves are sticking out at a point and that's just literally how I blocked it. I might need to take the steamer to that or just have it as some sort of design feature. So that is going to be interesting. But yep, I just thought I'd uh, talk about this right at the top that my ranunculus is wearable. I actually really, really like it. This is probably the second time I've worn it. Um, but yeah, I can't can't wait to get this outside in the sunshine when we get slightly warmer weather. So yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as I said at the top of this, the very top of this episode, I don't really have much to show off. I have been very, I'd, I'd say 95% monogamous on a project this last week and a bit. And I do have one other project to show off that you haven't seen before and then I've got a tiny bit of progress on another project and then I've just got what I would say is quite a lot of progress on my main project. So I'll show off the one that has the least amount of progress, but progress is progress. So when you last saw my boring sweater, I was maybe like one round after separating for the sleeves. And now I'm at least maybe 10 rounds. So I have put a wee bit of progress on it. This project does still hurt my hands when I work on it. So I'm not kind of jumping to work on it, which is a sh real shame because it's such a gorgeous pattern and I really can't wait for the finished result. But my hands tell me when I can work on it and when to stop working on it. So it's not received a ton of love. Uh, I had an hour and a half call during the week for work where I did pick it up and just work on this. But by the end of that hour and a half, my hand was just like, please stop. Like, please, please stop. So, hasn't received a ton of love, but progress is progress. And eventually this will get finished. We are going into the warmer weather here in the UK. She says, having just had two lots of snow in the last week. <laughs> but we should be going into the warmer weather. So I'm not jumping to get this finished. Like, I'm not racing. So it will get done for the colder weather. Um, if it gets warmer. <laughs> but yeah, this is the Born Sweater by Anna Freiburg. Apologies if I, I say that name wrong. And that is of Yarnistry. I will link the pattern down below, but it is to Ravelry, so if you don't have, if you can't use Ravelry, I am sorry, but maybe you can contact the designer to see if there's another way for you to get this pattern. <coughs> okay, so my other project that you haven't seen before, I don't think, is a hat project. 
I'm at that awkward stage of growing my hair out where I kind of look like I have a mullet <laughs> and my hair just doesn't know what it's doing, it doesn't know how to sit, like if I wear a hat it smooshes right down, if I'm not wearing a hat I try and kind of fluff it up a bit um, and yeah it's only going to get more awkward as it grows out and so I've decided to try and minimise some of that awkwardness by making a couple of more hats for myself. This hat is being made out of Knit and Pearl Palm Hat Yarn in the Clarity colourway. This comes in 85 gram balls which is odd to me but I guess you don't need the full 100 grams if you're doing a hat. In this 85 grams you get approximately 223 metres. And they've got it as a lightweight number three yarn, but I am saying it's kind of like a, a DK, if that's what number three is meant to be. I think it is, I'm not sure. We don't really use that symbols in the UK, or at least I don't use it. But this is yarn that you could get out of the supermarket Aldi here in the UK. My mum had bought it and had decided to do a bit of a de-stash and I swapped her some iron weight yarn and I got a couple of balls of this. Two in this colourway, <clears throat> one in a yellowy orange with some white or cream and then I think there's a solid green and all of them came with pom-poms. Whoops. So all of them came with these types of pom-poms with two strings to attach it but she also had some fuzzy poms with a loop um, like faux fur pom-poms. <coughs> uh, so I do like this pom-pom but it looks a bit dishevelled like some of the strands are starting to come out. Maybe I can cut it down or I'll just use some of the pom-poms I got from my mum. So the pattern is just the Ross hat pattern by Ross of Smells Like Yarn who you can find on YouTube but he hasn't recorded in a while because of his personal reasons and I fully support him and I hate the fact he has been driven to not podcast. Uh, but this is the Ross hat pattern, which is a free hat pattern. I will link that down below to his website so it doesn't go to Ravelry. And it's just a very simple pattern. I have made just a couple of modifications. Uh, I think the original pattern calls for a 3x2 rib. Um, and I've done a 2x2 two two, and I've done the knit stitch as a twisted knit stitch just for... I quite like a twisted knit stitch, to be fair. For no reason other than I like it. But yeah, let's see. It's obviously not. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's bring all my hair out. <laughs> ah, obviously it is not long enough, but it does fit. <laughs> so I will be working. Oh, nearly dropped a stitch. I'll be working on this throughout the week. Um, it normally sits on my work desk and I will put in a couple of rows whenever I'm on a call or I have a meeting or something so I I know of at least one meeting I have this coming week. There might be more so it'll get a tiny bit of love. <sighs> so. The main project that has been taking up a lot of my attention and my absolute love, to be perfectly honest, is my granny stripe blanket. I've put at least six inches onto this blanket, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to remember just how wide this blanket is. So when I started the ball of yarn that I was using it was this size which is doesn't look like much but if you compare it to like 
my face, it's half my face. And this was made up of scraps of leftover commercial sock yarn, um, the 10-15 grams of opal yarn, the wee mini balls you can get, um, and thankfully some yarn that um, some friends had sent me, uh, Amy particularly looking at you, you sent me quite a lot of sock yarn scraps which I am extremely grateful for. And out of the other ball that I used, this is what I have left of that first ball. I'm trying not to unravel the blanket. So that's quite a difference. And you saw these two balls, like the original one, you saw these both in the last full podcast that I'd done. And so you can see just how much smaller this is. So here is the blanket. So where is my, here's my marker. So I have worked it la on, worked on it last time and I showed you the progress. After I filmed that podcast I moved my progress keeper up. So the progress you're seeing is from the last time you saw this blanket. Okay, I literally just saw it. There it is. <laughs> So there's the marker all the way down here. See that glittery bit there? Maybe it's more than six inches. Do I have? Let's see. I'm going to use a sock ruler to tell me how much I've done. So. Oh, that's not inches. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at about 12 inches of work. I've, I'm over double what I said. And if I do stand up and I sit it on the floor, it's just under, you can't really see, but it's just under my bust. And so that's a fair length so far. Obviously I do have a way to go. Um, I laid it out on the pull-out sofa and I'll explain why I'm on the pull-out sofa. I put, I put it, laid it out and kind of put it right at the bottom and I wanted to see just how high up it goes. And I do have a way to go, but I genuinely reckon that with what I have left in this, the big yarn ball and all the mini opals I have, I think I'll get this done. I really, really think I'm going to get this done. Not anytime soon. It takes a long time to do this blanket. Like I have shown you, I've tried to show you the width of this blanket. So we'll do it this way so that my arm is fully stretched out. So that's one. And then So I physically, I'm only just able to do that at my wingspan. Uh, so it's, should be wide enough, her has got a nice bed, should. <laughs> but yeah, this is just taking all my love right now. I just get comfortable on the sofa to my right. This is just a wee single chair, whereas I like to sit cross-legged on the sofa, slap bag in the middle of it, have the blanket draped over me and just kind of work across. Um, and yeah, like it just brings me so much joy right now. It's all I really want to work on. It's mostly better for my wrists. Sometimes I have to put it down. I think it's maybe kind of like a weight issue or sometimes just need to rest my wrists. Oh, I just I can't wait to work on it when I'm editing this video and waiting for it to upload onto YouTube I'll be working on it and then last night for example I was sat watching Star Trek the original and just working away on it and it was just so nice so I'm really glad that I brought this out of hibernation two and a bit weeks ago and I think in total I'm looking at about 
15 inches of work in about two weeks. Now that's not obviously a solid two weeks, I do have a full time job, but yeah. I'm just really really happy with it, like it's so pretty as well, it's just so many different colours. I do still have, I did try and work a wee bit more on the Marl Magic sweater actually, so maybe I do have one more thing. And I'm currently causing an avalanche. I am currently joining the back pieces together. I have created the second armhole and I'm now working on the last section. Right, let's not pull stitches off. So I have done that much on the back and I've worked down joining these two pieces. Oh, I've snagged a yarn. Let's, there we go. That's the, that's the correct side. Sometimes it's really difficult to tell which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So, this is the back piece and you work it all the way down and then you've got a wee bit more to go as it flares out. So I do have quite a way to go. But I ended up putting this down just because my wrists were causing me so much pain and having to lift this and turn it, like to flip it to work on the opposite side was definitely a contributing factor to why my wrists have been so sore and possibly a contributing factor to my shoulder. So I've put that down for now. I may actually pick that up today after. Instead of working on the blanket, I'll maybe try and work on that because I do want it finished. It's so close to being done. Minus all the ends to weave in. <laughs> That's not going to be fun. That is really not going to be fun. Fresh orange and lemonade in my favourite gin glass. There is no gin in this. And that is it for my work in progress. So we're currently looking at 17 minutes. So this might be my shortest ever podcast. So if you don't want to stay around for the blather part of this, then thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my tiny little podcast. But for those that do want to stick around, um, The reason I'm sleeping on the sofa bed is because Scott has tested positive. He took an LFT on Monday for his job and it came back positive. But then he had to go for a PCR. Scott's work demands that he provides a PCR as well. So don't at me saying that you don't need it. He needs it for his job. But the PCR came back negative. So we didn't really understand what was going on, but he didn't feel ill either, he wasn't showing any symptoms. And then he started kind of feeling a bit rough on Thursday. And so about 3am, like he'd given up trying to sleep because he was just feeling a bit uncomfortable, restless, like he kept having to cough. Um, he ended up coming downstairs at about 2 o'clock and took another piece of... Uh, another LFT at about 3 o'clock in the morning and it came back positive. So we were just like, right, okay, we're going to deal with this as if it is the C word and we'll see how he gets on. And he did another LFT on Saturday and it came back positive very quickly. He went for a PCR and we got the results last night. It is positive. So I've been sleeping on the sofa bed since Friday night. And that's fine. It's actually fairly comfortable, believe it or not. Like, I hadn't really been sleeping well on the bed for about a week. I go through bouts of not sleeping particularly great. And then when I slept on the sofa bed, I don't know if it's just the fact I was so tired. Uh, but yeah, I slept pretty well. <laughs> So I'm on the sofa bed, Scott is confined to the bedroom, uh, 
I am testing daily. I so far have tested negative each time. Thank God, touch wood. Uh, I really, really hope I won't catch it, but I do feel like I have... I, I feel particularly wheezy, so I've been taking my inhaler. Uh, I hope it's nothing but just the bad weather. Like, we have... We've had snow twice in a week, which is not normal for February. Not here. Well, I don't know about Paisley, but... In my neck of the woods, it's not normal to have snow twice in one week. Uh, so it has been quite cold, and the cold goes straight from my chest. It goes straight from my asthma. So it could just be the cold weather. I'm hoping it's just the cold weather. But, yeah. Um... Uh, that's it. <laughs> wow, 20 minute podcast. That is unheard of for me. Well, I'll not keep you any longer. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, send your speedy wishes to Scott and all wishes that I don't catch it. That would be lovely. But speedy wishes to Scott because he... He's getting better. He is definitely getting better, um, but this is the sickest he'd ever been. Scott has a fairly good immune system, so we thought. Um, and he doesn't really get sick. Like he only had his first chest infection about six months ago. Uh, so to be thirty three and only just have your first chest infection, like that's insane. To me, to me, that's insane. Because I've been getting chest infections for years, like, since I can remember. Um, so yeah, send some speedy well wishes his way. And I will keep you up to date uh, with how he's getting on. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you are staying safe and staying well. And until next time, bye.